hour one of Brian Speed. It's Monday. That means On Your Mind Monday. And I hope you have some homelessness on your mind because during hour one, I am going to twist it a little bit and concentrate a little bit more on homelessness, if you don't mind. As you know, they had the camp out over at the Normandin School the other night. Before, before I even get into that, hour two, the more traditional On Your Mind Monday comes your way. All right. We'll open it up to just about each and every issue that you'd like to do during hour two. But hour one, what's on your mind about the homeless, about what you've heard about the the uh, one night out, uh, one homeless night is one too many uh, ev- event that took place over the weekend on Friday night. And for those that were outside, boy, weren't you lucky that it was Friday night instead of Saturday night or Sunday night or um, maybe even tonight. And in saying that to you, imagine, I'm, I'm sure you did Saturday night when the temperature really started to go down, when the thermometer looked like it was about ready to crack. You probably thought about it on Saturday night, what it must be for the true homeless who don't have a place like you had um, that you were going to be sleeping in on Saturday night. And you can remember how cold it was on Friday night. Well, it's been like that for the past couple of nights. And you know, and I know, this ain't winter. Okay, so keep that in mind. Hour two, traditional On Your Mind Monday. This hour, Michelle Hantman, the president from the United Way of Greater New Bedford, she's going to join us to give us her opinion, what she what she learned, and I, I think there's a lot to be learned. You know, I had a conversation with Phil, and he was trying to tell me that basically the, the company line dealing with the, the event. But, but I think for all, it was a learning experience. We also have Kathleen McKeeran, reporter for the Standard Times, who camped out at the Normandin on Friday night. She is going to um, give us a little bit more about the article that she wrote You may have seen it in Sunday's Standard Times. Uh, I did run into her yesterday, and um, although we had made the plan for her to come on on Friday to come in today, uh, the idea that I saw her yesterday and can get a little bit more info about what she's going to talk about, I think think your mind's eye will illuminate when you hear her, and even more so with the guest who is sitting across from me, She was not at the event Friday evening. She is classified as a homeless person. Her name is Christine. She does not want to use her last name, not because of friends, but some people that may not be friends. Christine, uh, sit up to the microphone. Say hello. Hello. Glad to have you in studio today. Thank you, Brian. You and I had a chance meeting. I picked you up at point a as brian the cab driver taking you to meet up with your boyfriend who by the way doesn't live with you who is also homeless okay and you guys were rendezvousing somewhere and i told you about the event what first went through your mind when i told you about the homeless night at the normandon school well it was great about the awareness that there's people out there that that are aware that there's an epidemic of homelessness but there needs to be more awareness. There's so many families and people out there right now that are homeless that you don't even imagine. You can't imagine. And it's such a sad thing to live in America. And and this is happening to our own people. People think it's because we don't work. We do work. My situation was I got sick. I'm 53, and I got sick. What do you mean by sick? I had a stroke, and I want to cry, but I had a stroke, and then I had a heart attack. And my boyfriend quit his job to stay home and take care of me, and he's a fisherman, and fishing wasn't doing as well as it had been because of all the new regulations. And because of all of that, we went through our savings, we lost our car, we lost our apartment, 
and we were thrown out on the streets in February. And it was horrible. We didn't know where to go or what to do. Now, you say you were thrown out in February. Was it last February, February 2015? Yes. And so there you are out on the streets. You don't know where to go. Where did you go? Where did you end up? I ended up in the hospital um, because of my health conditions. I was able to go to the hospital and stay there. But I was locked up 24-7. I wasn't allowed to go out which really stunk. You know, we take that for granted. And I never did anything wrong. And that's what I felt. You felt like you did something wrong? And I was in jail. Now, was it St. Luke's Hospital that you were locked up in? No, I was locked up in a hospital in Jamaica Plain, Arbor Fuller. Um, And there was quite a few homeless people there. There was... It was a horrible place. It it was a good place, but it was a horrible place to be locked up in. We are speaking to Christine. She is labeled as homeless. Uh, You are in a shelter right now, correct? Correct. And your boyfriend is not at the same shelter that you're at. So you have to... uh, How do you guys get together besides, you know, Brian the cab driver picking (laughs) you up at a place and dropping you off somewhere? Well, we take a bus. We meet one another downtown. He has to be out of his shelter at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he comes back. He has to be back in at 3. Unless he's working, then he can come back a little bit later when he gets done work. When when you say when he's working, so he is back to work because because you guys aren't together? Now, is he still a fisherman? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay. He's still a fisherman. Um, He just made... A couple of trips, which is fantastic. Fishing is coming back, so um, hopefully soon we'll be able to get an apartment. But then again, because I had the eviction in February, I can't. I'm having a hard time getting an apartment. Why don't you explain the eviction? Because uh, you had mentioned uh, that you hadn't paid your rent, and eventually. Yeah. No, uh, you I did pay my rent. It wasn't that I didn't pay my rent. It was a tenant at will, which means that the landlord didn't want me living there because I, I co- complained to the Board of Health with the conditions of the home. So you believe that because you complained, the landlord wanted you out. Yes. And he gave you one of those 30-day notice to quit. Correct. For no particular reason. And you didn't have a lease. No. So... Technically, from the time that he submitted that to you or had the constable submit it to you, Correct. you had 30 days plus the end of the current month that you were in. Correct. Okay. You decided not to leave at that time. It wasn't that I decided I wanted to move, but the problem was is everybody wants first and last. I get a Social Security disability check, and I couldn't save enough to get first and last and I tried to stop the proceeding and um, I went to court that morning that I was supposed to be evicted and I missed the court appearance by five minutes and because of that he had, when I got home half of my uh, furniture and things were already packed up in a van ready to be moved by the constable well something I don't know, maybe I'm missing here. So are you trying to tell us that on the day of your court appearance for eviction, you missed that meeting by about five minutes, and then when you got back home that very same day, your landlord already had your stuff packed and ready for you to go? Yes. Are you sure that was the the last day and, and not some other day to make sure that you get evicted? No, it was February 12th. It was February 12th. Of 2015. 2015. Okay. And so you and your boyfriend ended up leaving. That particular night, When is that the night that you ended up going to the hospital? I ended up going to St. Luke's, and he... He, your boyfriend? Yes, he ended up sleeping in some car. And I, from that day, I went from St. Luke's to Arbor Fuller, and he, he slept in the car that night. And um, 
the following day, he was fortunate enough to get a bed at the shelter downtown. How did you end up back in New Bedford? Um, it was kind of a freaky story. I couldn't get a, another place to live when I I went from Arbor Fuller to an, another shelter, and um, you only could stay there for 30 days. And from there, I couldn't find another place to stay, so I ended up back in New Bedford. And I was going to, it was in April, April 28th. That you ended up back in New Bedford. Yes. So you're back in New Bedford. Where did you end up staying At that a, night? I ended up staying with a friend in Fall River. Okay. And how long did you do that for? A month. One month. Until I could get into the place that I'm at right now. Wow. So why, if you're at somebody else's place, why do you consider yourself homeless? Because that's not a place to live. I'm in a room with six women. Um, you know, things happen in those places. What happens? People steal from you. Um, there's a lot of gossip in there. You can get thrown out for something that somebody else does. If they believe that you did it because of the gossip. So it is, every day is a new day, and you don't know if that's going to be your home for the day. You just don't know. We're talking to Christine. I'm going to open up the phone lines, and believe me, we have other guests coming in during this hour. If you may have a question for Christine, it might actually go to Kathleen or, or Michelle, but believe me, I'm going to open up the phone lines, 508 Nine nine six zero five hundred toll free eight seven seven nine nine six fourteen twenty. If you'd like to send an email, Brian's Beat at WBSM dot com. Brian's Beat B R I A N S B E A T at WBSM dot com. It is an on your mind Monday. Phil Paleolog.